Hello, hello, this is Father Adam greeting you with some good news that I know you can use. I will never forget Bobby, an 11-year-old young boy who walked in to the church during one of our Spanish language novena services for Our Lady of Guadalupe last December, and he seemed kind of lost and out of place, and so I invited him to come and sit in the front row of the church. Well, as as is customary, I was talking and talking and talking in Spanish, and all of a sudden, uh, Bobby raised raises his hand. And so I call on him and I said, yes. And he says, well, I heard that you had tamales here. And I said, yes, but that's after the service. And he says, but I'm hungry now. When will the service be over? Well, let's just say that ended the service right there. And the service of serving the tamales began. But I noticed that Bobby seemed in a hurry to leave and only ate one of his tamales. And so I asked him, Bobby, why haven't you finished your two tamales? Because we were giving out two per person. Didn't you like them? It's then that Bobby broke my heart by saying, I only ate one and the other I am saving for my brothers. It turns out that Bobby was home yet again with his Brothers, as his mother went to one of the local casinos where they comped her a room for three nights. She had a free room as she gambled, but couldn't take her kids. The casino comps your room and your meals, but doesn't allow you to take your children. So she left the kids at home. A very common occurrence in the most impoverished county of all of California, where drugs, alcohol, and the casinos run rampant in the lives of so many people. We had tamales galore. And so I picked up a few more tamales and I said, Bobby, here, take these as well. To which he says, is there enough for me to take for three days for me and my brothers? Is there enough for me to take for three days? for me and my brothers. You know, this question, is there enough, haunts me to this very day. We go through life thinking we are not enough. There is not enough. And the Lord comes to you and to me and to Bobby today and every day and says, there is enough. I am enough, the Lord says. You are enough. I am in your life. Rest in me. Jesus says, come to me, all you who find life laborsome and burdensome, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and carry my yoke, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Not the yoke of your problems, but my yoke. I am your shepherd, the Lord says, and when I am your shepherd, there is nothing you shall want. You see, during Jesus' time, it was customary that each rabbi would place the yoke on the shoulders of his disciples. The yoke was what the disciples, the students of the rabbi, and Jesus is our rabbi, he is our teacher, that's what they would carry. And so the yoke that we carry as the disciples of Jesus is light. It's not heavy. Your problems are not heavy. It's all in your head. You are your own worst enemy. The Lord wouldn't give you anything that you couldn't handle. The Lord wouldn't give you a cross that you couldn't carry. He loves you for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You see, Bobby and the many suffering children and adolescents that I have met, not just in Clear Lake and Lake County, California, but during my time growing up in inner city Chicago or during my time in the seminary when I served in inner city neighborhoods or the struggling children and the adolescents that I met in my time in Mexico, they're always on my mind. And the question, why would God allow this, is something that 
you ask yourself all the time and that I ask all the time as well. Why would God allow such hardship for his beloved children if he truly is our loving father? Why? Why does Bobby and so many young people and people in general suffer and struggle to survive and make it? Why do we go through life asking the question, is there enough? There is clearly enough. In our country, the United States of America, we have clearly enough food and stuff. 40% of the food in the United States ends up in a garbage can. Just go to a cafeteria in any school. There's more food in the garbage than there is on the tables. So why does God permit a life of struggle like in the case of Bobby and his brothers? Bobby's story and the many stories of the struggling young people are always on my mind and in my heart. And my heart bleeds for them. And my heart bleeds for you. That's why I'm coming to you right now. I feel your pain. I carry it. I pray for you. I hope you know that. The pain of the young people who feel rejected and depressed and suicidal and unwanted and no good the young people who cut themselves and vomit and have horrible eating disorders and are on drugs, the young people and the not so young people who feel unloved and uncared for, uncared for and just don't want to live the struggle. You know, I carry it. The young man that I met as a seminarian in Good Shepherd Parish when I was a seminarian in the little village neighborhood of Chicago, He will always be on my mind, Jose, where gang violence ran rampant and adolescents would die in the gangs and the violence that went on in the streets. I asked him a normal question. I said, Jose, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he looked at me and that answer will always stay with me. He says, you mean if I grow up? If I grow up. But that same young man in Chicago, Jose, whom I am in touch with through Facebook, is now a very successful real estate broker. He has four children and is happily married. And he tells me, last time I talked to him, he says, Father Adam, I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for my inner city neighborhood. I wouldn't give up that inner city neighborhood experience that I had for anything. It was growing up in the little village neighborhood that gave me the foundation for who I am today. He says, the struggle made me who I am. He had to fight to survive. And you know, if it doesn't kill you, it only makes you stronger. Struggle is a good thing. The cross is a good thing. God permitted Jose in the little village neighborhood of Chicago to struggle for survival, to develop him because God is after developing us. God developed Jose into who he is today through the struggle as God developed his son, Jesus Christ, through his own struggle. The cross is a gateway. The cross is a good thing for us. It is through the cross that we come to the glory The cross was good for God's son, Jesus Christ. And the cross was good for Jose. The cross is good for you. And you know, the cross is also good for Bobby. I have to accept that. God is permitting Bobby to struggle, to develop him as well. God permitted me to struggle, to develop me into the person I am today, to live under communism, to immigrate to the United States, to go through my parents' divorce, to be bullied in school. I could go down the list of everything that I've had to struggle with and all the things that I continue to struggle it with to this very day. But those are good things because I wouldn't be the person I am if it wasn't for my struggles. You wouldn't be who you are if it wasn't for your struggles. Struggling is good. The cross is a good thing. Embrace it. God is developing you. God is developing you because God loves you. God wouldn't give you anything that wasn't good for you. Otherwise, God isn't good. And God 
isn't your loving father if he would give you something that wasn't good for you. So accept the struggle. Battle on. Rage on. Fight on. Paul says that in 2 Timothy 4, 7. Fight the good fight. Run the race and keep the faith. And the crown of glory will be yours. Do you understand that? The only way to glory is through the cross. Let us not glory and boast in anything except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says we embrace the cross. So embrace it. If God permitted his own son, Jesus Christ, to be poor, to struggle, to be a refugee, to be born in a barn, in a cave, in the midst of manure, in the midst of feces, in the midst of animals, to be part of a dysfunctional family, to get lost, to suffer, to be ridiculed, to be put on the cross, to be spat upon. Don't you think it was good for Jesus? Of course it was good for Jesus. And it's good for you. God, his daddy, wouldn't have allowed it. And God wouldn't allow anything for you to go through it if it wasn't good. But that's where faith comes in, to trust that God has a purpose. In whatever you are going through, listen to me right now. Whatever you are going through has a purpose and it will all be okay. Bobby will be okay. Jose was okay. I turned out okay, didn't I? I mean, come on. Okay, I've got issues. You've got issues, but we turn out okay. You'll be just fine. For God is with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? So walk by faith, not by sight. Hmm? Bobby has a life of struggle. Of course he does. And it breaks my heart. He fights not just for himself, but for his brothers as well. He is the wonderful man, the wonderful young man he is because of that struggle. And when young people or people in general try to remove struggle from their life, like his mother is doing, isn't she? You know, through the casino, when you try to remove struggle, through gangs, which Jose didn't in the little village neighborhood, when you try to remove struggle through drugs, through sex, through money, or other ways, the computer, instead of accepting your struggle and learning to live with the struggle and pushing forward, when you stop looking for the tamales, when you stop looking for the tamales, you fall into the pit, the abyss. When you go to the casino, instead of looking for the tamales, you fall into the pit, the abyss, the darkness. Stop trying to remove the struggle, in other words, and start fighting in the midst of the struggle. I met so many young people incarcerated while I was at Pelican Bay state prison, the maximum security state prison where I was serving, volunteering as a chaplain, visiting the incarcerated inmates. And I would ask myself, you know, these are children of immigrants. They're most of them from East Los Angeles. What is the difference between them and me? I came here as an immigrant. What's the difference? Well, the difference between them and myself isn't that, you know, they had dysfunctional families and I had a perfect family because I come from a dysfunctional family too. The difference is, is that I had to struggle in life. I had poverty. Hmm? When they, most of them born in the United States, their parents tried to do everything and they tried to do everything to remove the struggle through gangs, through drugs, through going after material things. Poverty is a good thing for us. Struggle is a good thing for us. It makes us into who we are. If it was good for God's son, Jesus Christ, it's good for us. The problem is when we do not embrace the struggle and try to remove it. So the best thing you can give to your children is struggle, make them fight, make them battle on mm? instead of removing the struggle. 
and God is with us in the midst of the struggle. Stop trying to remove it. Way John, Ray John, push forward in the midst of the struggle. God is with you. That means all will be well. The Lord is my shepherd. We heard this Sunday. There is nothing I shall want. Mm. He is walking with me in the midst of the struggle. Mm. I am not alone. And I'm walking in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. And I fear no evil for you are with me at my side. Your, your rod and your staff that give me comfort and courage, they surround me. Mm. I'm walking. I'm not stuck. Mm, I may be surrounded by my enemies, as Psalm 23 says, but I am walking. I am not stuck. This means if I'm walking and I'm not stuck, this means that the walk has to end. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So walk. Don't get stuck. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He spreads a table before me in the sight of my foes. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. When the Lord says in this Sunday's gospel, come away by yourselves to a deserted place for a little while. He's not talking about a physical place like a vacation or a destination. He is talking about resting in him in the midst of a deserted place. What happened in the deserted place? Jesus struggled and confronted the devil in the desert. So Jesus is sending us into the place inside of us. Mm? And what's, what's there? The devil, the demons, confront your demons, huh? as Jesus did in the desert. So Jesus is sending us into that place inside of us where we are to confront them, the ones that are trying to destroy us, those demons, huh? all that is attacking you, that which is saying to you, you won't make it. Of course you will make it. God is with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? It's not you who live, but Jesus who lives in you. You are not alone. You are not ugly as the devil and the demons try to tell you. You are, you are not what the de devil is trying to tell you through your enemies. Stop with listening to the voices that are depressing you and bringing you down. Confront them. And you will never find rest until you confront them and fight them. Huh? The demons who say your suffering is bad. No, it's not. Mm -mm. God wouldn't let you have the problem you have, the sickness you have, whatever it is. If it was bad for you. The demons who tell you your problem will defeat you or that your life is horrible or that your struggle is bad. Get behind me, Satan, to hell with you and the devil and all the evil spirits. The demons that invite you to get away from the suffering by going to the casino. Get behind me, Satan, huh? Or that invite you to go to the bottle or to drugs or to pornography or to the internet or to shopping Confront those demons and tell them what Jesus said. Mm, man does not live by bread alone, huh? but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the only way to find rest is to find that rest in the Lord, in the midst of the desert. In, hear that invitation today. Come away by yourselves to a deserted place for a little while. Hmm? There are demons there, but I am with you in the midst of the demons and everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You'll be just fine. huh? God is with you. Mwah. Everything will be just fine as I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mwah. Look for those tamales, uh, not for the casino. <laughs> God bless you.